Hey folks, I'm with Nerdwork Network and Computer Enthusiast Master Race back in store for another video. Uh, as you can see here, I got the uh, EK M.2 NVMe heatsink that I'm going to be putting on the uh, Samsung 960 Evo 250 gigabyte. Yeah, that's what I'll be using in the uh, <coughs> Defiant C tempered glass edition build. Uh, but anyways, though, I uh, just wanted to go ahead and do a quick a uh, installation guide. Well, not installation guide, but Oh yeah, still an installation guide of uh, getting this set up on a, a device. It's uh, fairly simple, but there have been a few questions on CEMR as well as I haven't seen there have been many uh, detailed explanations on it on YouTube and other sites as well too. As it is a relatively new product and uh, hasn't got much a uh, spotlight on it per se. Uh, which there are a variety of other different uh, options to choose from. However, I uh, like the uh, EK model on that. Um, but anyways, real quick, uh, it comes in the black and nickel version. This is the black one. Uh, on the box, it also does have the color indications of red and blue. So I don't know if they plan on coming out with one in the future of those color schemes, which would be nice on there as well, too. Uh, however, I chose the black. Uh, it seemed to fit a little bit better in terms of the nickel on there. Uh, we'll see how that works out. A, a current retail pricing, though, uh, for the black, I believe, is $12.99. And the nickel is $14.99 on performance PCs for the US. Uh, pricing can vary from other retailers though as well, but I do believe it uh, mirrors the same for EK's actual website. But anyways though, as uh, you all know, uh, the M.2 drive SSDs, they can get relatively hot, especially the 960 series. Uh, my main machine has a 950 on it, it doesn't do too bad. Uh, but it usually hovers right around the 40 degree mark uh, with full load, which is kind of hot for these drives. Uh, so uh, this heatsink uh, is actually was a very much needed addition to the EK lineup in my opinion. Um, it's supposed to be able to bring temperatures down from anywhere from 8 to 11 degrees Celsius uh, to a, a help cool down the drive course. If you have better airflow in the system, those can even be uh, more significant reduce, or significantly reduced. Uh, and we'll determine that later at a later time to see about the performance on it though. Uh, anyways, though, it's compatible with all single-sided type uh, 2280 M.2 drives. And uh, with the unit itself on that, it does consist of a front and back plate. Uh, so the compatibility is limited on the M.2 connectors. I believe the, uh, I'll have to, maybe wrong, I'll correct it if so. But I believe it, EK stated 4.2 millimeters in height. Uh, so it may not fit on all a uh, M.2 connectors. I'm thinking more so of the ones that are usually behind the rear of the motherboard, possibly causing uh, some issues with that. Uh, a lot of the ones in the front usually do have that adequate height for it. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get these opened up and I'll go ahead and uh, give you a quick rundown of what's in the box of the uh, EK heatsink on that. Not really going to talk anything about the uh, Sam or Samsung 960 Evo. There's plenty of things out there about those, but uh, of course I'll be opening that as well too. Though. Uh, but uh, stay tuned and enjoy. Hey folks, we're back. I, uh, I got everything unboxed uh, on here uh, and also got the uh, stickers and labels uh, peeled off of the uh, SSD itself as well too to uh, get better contact with those thermal pads on the uh, actual memory itself. Um, probably could have left the uh, stickers on the, well, not really the stickers, but a, uh, the identifying numbers on it, which did get ripped in half a little bit, but I don't know. I figured it'd be better just to go ahead and take that off, uh, but let's go ahead and uh, get down to it. Uh, also got the uh, heatsink unboxed as well too. What comes included with the uh, heatsink itself uh, is the clips right here. These are stainless steel and then you have the aluminum back plate, the aluminum front plate. It does have the uh, little button style emblem of EK on there that everybody likes as well as two different heat pads or not heat pads but thermal pads. Uh, there is the uh, 0.5 millimeter and then the one millimeter thickness on that. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get started on that. But the uh, installation of this is uh, fairly simple. The only things you really need on that is a coarse pair of scissors to go ahead and cut the uh, thermal pads, as well as uh, I've always found it with working with thermal pads, a pair of uh, fine tip tweezers uh, help out quite a lot getting the uh, protective casing off of it as well. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this started on there. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that over there just a little bit and try to keep everything in focus. I apologize if it gets a little bit out of frame. 
but we're going to go ahead and get this started on here. Uh, first off, yes, I do have some gloves on that to keep some of the fingerprints off the memory and all of that, plus the uh, thermal pads uh, does help a little bit. Uh, but what you do is, uh, first off, you start out with the uh, back plate, and you're going to go ahead and uh, select or put the uh, clips on it. And it can be a little bit of tricky getting everything on, but we'll go ahead and get these lined up properly. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and take those off. We'll do that here in a moment. We're going to measure out a... Uh, thermal pads first. On the back of the, uh, on the back heat sink, the one that actually applies to it is the uh, 0.5 millimeter. So we're just going to go ahead and line this up correctly here and confirm it lines up good with the drive as well. And we're going to go ahead and snip off our piece. Okay, so it's right about down there. And EK always does provide extra. It's one thing I do like about them. They always give you plenty of a thermal pad. And this heat sink is reusable too. Uh, if you do use it with another, another device or you give it to somebody else, things like that, all you really need to do in that case is just to a, uh, get new uh, thermal pads for it. Uh, you may be able to reuse them, it just depends. And then a, uh, it's just as good as new on that case. Either. It's a passive cooler, there's no liquid or anything going through it. Uh, so that is an open addition. I'm just gonna cut the other thermal pad as well too. Put the excess over towards the side. All right. So make sure you do have the uh, mounting clips and all of that, or not mounting clips, but the uh, mounting of the device itself uh, lined up with the heat sink on that with a little screw port there. That way, so you don't end up getting it the opposite direction and end up having to take it all apart. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and apply the uh, thermal pad first. So let's go ahead and get this unpeeled. These can be a bit of a hassle to do. That's why I like having these tweezers. Helps take it off very easy. After you do take that off, it does kind of get a little limp. Not gonna go anywhere with that though. And do have a little bit of excess, so let's go ahead and cut that off. It's always best to have more than you actually need. Give yourself a little room because it's more difficult to add more to it. And then when you're done with that part, you just peel off the other side. This one sometimes proves to be a little bit tricky, but another reason why the tweezers come in handy. There we go. Add that to the side and just make sure it's good and secure on there. It is a little sticky. Make sure there's not any air bubbles or anything in it. Just kind of work those out if you have to. <clears throat> I don't think any of that was on camera. I do apologize. And then just place the uh, SSD on top of that. Once again, make sure those screw holes are lined up properly. Don't want to try to get this all installed and everything and then have to take it apart and then go through all that process again just because the screw holes weren't lined up. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is apply the thermal pad to the top. Looks like I have some excess to trim on this one as well too, which is fine. Take off the excess first. And let's see, I'll try to get this on camera. There. And I'm just taking my tweezers, pulling off the casing. If you hear a kitty in the background, somebody is wanting in. And just line it up with the middle. And then apply. Yep, got a little bit more excess on there. Let's trim that back some. Make 
here to flatten it out a bit, make sure it's got good contact. And then just take off the other piece as well too. <clears throat> now this time what you're going to go ahead and do is, oop, lost that, let's flip that upside down so it doesn't get dirty. Get the drive lined up properly with the mounting hole for the screw. And with the heat sinks as well too. Don't push down too hard on them because you can uh, crack these a little bit. Okay, everything looks lined up. And then what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to take the uh, clips and just push that onto there. You may have to do it a couple times. They are a little tricky. As I just lost control of it. Let's try that again. Be careful that you do not damage your uh, SSD. And got one back up. It's good to get one connected right there, and then you just kind of push the other one into place, like so. It's good and secure. Double check everything, make sure everything's lined up properly, looks flush, and repeat the process for the last one. Get one side clipped up, push the other one into place. There we go. <clears throat> Double check, make sure everything's lined up good, the connectors are good, screw hole mounts good, everything's good, so there it is. Very simple in fact, they just got to get those, re uh, not retention clips, but a uh, mounting clips uh, uh, secure on there, and uh, that way so it can go ahead and hold everything together. Um, like I said though, this is a passive cooler, so I don't have any... Uh, water cooling or anything need to be done for it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and leave the uh, protective AIA seal on there until it's actually ready to be installed and actually completed on the project. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so I uh, got this uh, taken care of. I'll go ahead and get it uh, ready to put it into the uh, rig and see how it performs. Uh, I may have some performance tests done on this. I may not, it just depends on how long it takes me to get this upload or how long it takes me to get the system up and running and tested with a bit test bench and I, uh, with a um, getting this uploaded. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, thanks for watching on it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. It was just a little quick video on that, nothing too big and fancy, just getting this taken care of and mounted on there. Uh, like I said, there hasn't been that many uh, uh, other tutorials or anything to do it. it. It's simple, it's not anything complicated, but there are people out there that uh, do get a little confused by some things. The instructions, are fairly straightforward, but I'm sure it could confuse some people as well too. Uh, so I just wanted to go ahead and make sure I get this uploaded for uh, uh, everyone to uh, go ahead and uh, use as a reference on it. Um, but yep, I'm rambling on, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, if you like, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike, give it a thumbs down. Tell me in the comments what you didn't like about it, what I do wrong, blah, 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 blah. All that fun stuff. Uh, also be sure to subscribe, check out the other media outlets. Links are in the description as well. And uh, be sure to check out Computer Enthusiast Master Race on Facebook. Link will be in description as always. Uh, we'd love to have you over there and uh, see what else we have in store for you. But until next time, thank you for watching and you have a good day.